Hello, I'm Andy the Maniacal Cinephile, and here are my thoughts on Alien Covenant, which I saw last night. We mostly come out at night. Mostly. Alien Covenant is the sequel to Prometheus, and the third in the series to be directed by Ridley Scott. Overall, it's the eighth Alien film. Eh, more like number six, because they ignore the AVP movies. Although Prometheus raised more questions than it answered, presuming there would be a sequel, I liked it for the stunning visuals and strong performances. It tried to do something new, but the audience wants xenomorphs. So goodbye Shaw's interesting journey to find our creators who wanted to destroy us for some reason, and hello Alien Rehash! Ten years after Prometheus, the colony ship Covenant is on its way to the planet Aurigai 6, with 2,000 colonists and embryos on board. However, an energy surge damages the ship, killing a handful of colonists, as well as Captain James T. Franco. More movies should begin with Franco's immediate death. The crew, which is comprised entirely of couples, is woken up to repair the ship. While awake, they receive a transmission and track it to a nearby planet. Why do we keep going to these places? <gasps> We're the aliens. The crew decides to investigate the planet in hopes that they can colonize there instead of Aurigai 6, which is another seven years away. That would be my luck. Travel to a new world and the first thing you do is step in some crap. It's a good thing we keep a protective plug of wax in our ears. This is weird. What are the odds of finding human vegetation this far from Earth? Who planted it? Probably the same person who planted that marijuana. You hear that? What? No birds. No animals. Nothing. No birds or animals? Well, yeah, it's an alien planet. That's like going to Neptune and being like, Where's the giraffe? When they arrive, they encounter the android David, who has been a busy boy and up to something sinister. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. The film has a large cast, but the standouts are Danny McBride, Catherine Waterston, and Michael Fassbender. McBride plays the pilot Tennessee. Sorry, Dallas. And while the performance does have some humor to it, it was nice to see him in a more serious role. Waterston plays Daniels, a terraforming expert and the wife of the ship's captain. I was afraid the character was going to be another Ripley clone. Kill me. And she basically is, but I would say that she isn't as capable or badass as the eventual Ripley. Get away from her, you bitch! <laughs> The star of the movie is Michael Fassbender, who plays the androids David and Walter created by Wayland yutani Hopefully in the next one, we'll get an entire cast of Fassbenders. Walter is the newer model. They replaced David due to a virus issue. Yes, but does it come in a pleasure model? Once again, Fassbender shines. The scenes between the two androids are my favorite of the film and the most engaging. Andy, why did David kiss Walter? It was Fassbender on Fassbender action. Technically, would that be masturbation? The name Walter also breaks the naming tradition of the synthetic characters. A, B, C, D, W... It was a tribute to David Geiler and Walter Hill, who have been involved in every Alien film as producers or co-writers. Numi Rapace also returns as Dr. Elizabeth Shaw. Sort of. If you want to see her, you'll have to watch the prologue on YouTube. Sleep tight. I'll wake you when we arrive. He'll use the emergency air horn. It's a large cast. Probably too large. The performances are strong, but the characters are underdeveloped. We never get to know these characters. If you want that, then you'll have to watch the Last Supper scene on YouTube, including other scenes of Daniels interacting with Mother, which is basically Siri. Mother, how long have we been traveling? Approximately 24 days. Mothers think they know everything. What is this goddamn thing? 
four meters above you. Mother, why aren't these scenes in the actual movie? Like most Ridley Scott movies, Alien Covenant is beautiful. Whether it's a landscape or outer space, the view is gorgeous. It may also be the bloodiest Alien film thanks to the Backburster, Mouthburster, and the Chestburster. I'll put my face in anything... for science. The sets are beautiful, but the film needed more practical effects. I would say that probably 95% of the creatures are computer generated. For some fast moving shots of the xenomorph, it's understandable, but when you're holding on a shot of a creature just standing there, use a puppet or a guy in a suit. Uh oh, a shower scene in a scary movie. Dying with an erection is a hard way to go. Lastly, some of the CG effects for the newly born Neomorphs and Xenomorph were distracting. It's sad that a chestburster scene looked more realistic 40 years ago. It's kind of like watching a cyst popping video. Alien Covenant delivers some solid horror, stunning visuals, and great performances, but doesn't take the series in a new direction. Unless you count this sequel they set up in the last minute. Were there any surprises? Not really. It all felt very familiar, and the twist at the end, you could see coming from across the galaxy! Alien Covenant isn't a bad movie. There are a lot of great bits, but it feels a little hollow and is here to set up a fourth and possible fifth prequel. Five years later and counting, I'm still waiting for a prequel to the original Alien. Covenant does have its problems, but the reason to go see this movie is the grand visuals, creatures, and especially Michael Fassbender. So Mother, would I recommend Alien Covenant? Yes. This has been Andy the Maniacal Cinephile. Thanks for watching. And see you next time. What was that? Houston, we have a problem. Well, what is it? It's an ass hugger!